Castle Howard is a stately home in North Yorkshire, England, 15 miles north of York. It is a private residence, the home of the Carlisle branch of the Howard family for more than 300 years. Castle Howard is not a true castle, but this term is also used for English country houses erected on the site of a former military castle. It is familiar to television and film audiences as the fictional Brideshead, Head, both in Granada Television's 1981 adaptation of Evelyn Waugh's Brideshead Head Revisited and a two-hour 2008 remake for cinema. Today, it is part of the Treasure Houses of England group of heritage houses. History, building of Castle Howard began in 1699 and took over 100 years to complete to a design by Sir John Vaughan Brew for the third Earl of Carlisle. The site was that of the ruined Henderskelfet Castle, which had come into the Howard family in 1566 through the marriage of the Thomas, 4th Duke of Norfolk to Elizabeth Laburn widow of Thomas, 4th Baron Dacre. The house is surrounded by a large estate which, at the time of the 7th Earl of Carlisle, covered over 13,000 acres and included the villages of Welburn, Bulmer, Slingsby, Terrington and Coney's Thorp. The estate was served by its own railway station. Castle Howard, from 1845 to the 1950s. After the death of the 9th Earl in 1911, Castle Howard was inherited by his younger son Geoffrey, with later Earls having Naworth Castle as their northern country house. In 1952, the house was opened to the public by the then owner, George Howard, Baron Howard of Henderskelfell. It is currently owned by his son, the Honourable Simon Howard, who grew up at the castle. In 2003, the grounds were excavated over three days by Channel 4's time team, searching for evidence of a local village lost to allow for the landscaping of the estate. House The third Earl of Carlisle first spoke to William Talman, a leading architect, but commissioned Vaughan Brew, a fellow member of the Kit Kat Club, to design the building. Castle Howard was that gentleman dilettante's first foray into architecture, but he was assisted by Nicholas Hawksmo. Vaughan Brew's design evolved into a baroque structure with two symmetrical wings projecting to either side of a north-south axis. The crowning central dome was added to the design at a late stage, after building had begun. Construction began at the east end, with the east wing constructed from 1701 Euro 03, the east end of the garden font from 1701 Euro 06, the central block from 1703 Euro 06 and the west end of the garden font from 1707 Euro 09. All are exuberantly decorated in Baroque style, with coronets, cherubs, urns and ciphers, with Roman Doric pilasters on the north front and Corinthian on the south. Many interiors were decorated by Giovanni Antonio Pellegrini. The Earl then turned his energies to the surrounding garden and grounds. Although the complete design is shown in the third volume of Cullen Campbell's Vitruvius Britannicus, published in 1725, the West Wing was not started when Vaughan Brew died in 1726, despite his remonstration with the Earl. The house remained incomplete on the death of the third Earl in 1738, but construction finally started at the direction of the fourth Earl. However, Vaughan Brew's design was not completed. The West Wing was built in a contrasting Palladian style to a design by the third Earl's son-in-law, Sir Thomas Robinson. The new wing remained incomplete, with no first floor or roof, at the death of the fourth Earl in 1758. Although a roof had been added, the interior remained undecorated by the death of Robinson in 1777. Rooms were completed stage by stage over the following decades, but the whole was not complete until 1811. A large part of the house was destroyed by a fire which broke out on November 9, 1940. The dome, the central hall, the dining room and the state rooms on the east side were entirely destroyed. Paintings depicting the fall of Phaeton by Antonio Pellegrini were also damaged. In total, 20 pictures were lost. The fire took the Moulton and York Fire Brigade's eight towers to bring under control. Some of the devastated rooms have been restored over the following decades. In 1960 Euro 61 the dome was rebuilt and in the following couple of years, Pellegrini's fall of Phaeton was recreated on the underside of the dome. Some were superficially restored for the 2008 filming, and now house an exhibition. The east wing remains a shell, although it has been restored externally. 
Castle Howard is one of the largest country houses in England, with a total of 145 rooms. According to figures released by the Association of Leading Visitor Attractions, nearly 220,000 people visited Castle Howard in 2010. In 2009 an underwater ground source heat recovery system was installed under the castle's lake that halved the heating bill. Gardens Castle Howard has extensive and diverse gardens. There is a large formal garden immediately behind the house. The house is prominently situated on a ridge and this was exploited to create an English landscape park, which opens out from the formal garden and merges with the park. Two major garden buildings are set into this landscape, the Temple of the Four Wines at the end of the garden, and the Mausoleum in the park. There is also a lake on either side of the house. There is an arboretum called Ray Wood, and the walled garden contains decorative rose and flower gardens. Further buildings outside the preserved gardens include the ruined pyramid currently undergoing restoration, an obelisk and several follies and eye-catches in the form of fortifications. A John Vaughan Brew ornamental pillar known as the Quarter Faces stands in nearby Pretty Wood. There is also a separate 127-acre arboretum called Kew at Castle Howard, which is close to the house and garden, but has separate entrance arrangements. Planting began in 1975 with the intention of creating one of the most important collections of specimen trees in the United Kingdom. The landscape is more open than that of Ray Wood, and the planting remains immature. It is now a joint venture between Castle Howard and Kew Gardens and is managed by a charity called the Castle Howard Arboretum Trust, which was established in 1997. It was opened to the public for the first time in 1999. A new visitor centre opened in 2006. The grounds of Castle Howard are also used as part of at least two charity running races during the year. Listed buildings, the house is grade I listed and there are many other listed structures on the estate, several of which are on the Heritage at Risk Register. Castle Howard as film location, in addition to its most famous appearance in film as Bride as Head in both the 1981 television serial and 2008 film adaptations of Evelyn Waugh's novel Bride as Head Revisited, Castle Howard has been used as a backdrop for a number of other cinematic and television settings. In recent years, the castle has featured in the 1995 film The Buccaneers and Garfield, A Tale of Two Kitties, released in 2006. In the past, it was notable in Peter Ustinov's 1965 film Lady Ireland as the exterior set for Lady Lyndon's estate in Stanley Kubrick's 1975 film Barry Lyndon. It has even featured as the Kremlin, in Galton and Simpson's 1966 film The Spy with a Cold Nose. Rooms were used for indoor scenes in Death Comes to Pembley. Gallery. See also, Hampton National Historic Site, an 18th-century U.S. mansion said to have been inspired by Castle Howard. Castle Howard Railway Station, a more detailed architectural appraisal of Castle Howard is at John Vaughan Brew. List of Baroque Residences. References. External links, Castle Howard website, historical images of Castle Howard, Castle Howard entry from the D. Camillo Companion to British and Irish Country Houses, Q at Castle Howard website, Times Online article on Castle Howard's use of renewable energy systems, Castle Howard's article on their use of renewable energy systems, installer's site on Castle Howard's renewable energy systems, Historic England. Grade I. Images of England. Heritage at Risk, Castle Plus Howard, Breathless Beauty, Broken Beauty Skilled Pruel 4K Film Triptych by Artist Filmmaker Vanessa Jane Hall featuring Castle Howard.